Hi everybody, this is Kimberly from Starfish Designs Embroidery Group. Keep trying to find better setups in here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have very good electricity up here and I already kind of did something to my machine and turned the lights out. I had to restart it. So I hope this lighting is going to be better and you're going to have to forgive me because I'm going to have to keep looking in the frame to make sure I'm showing you stuff that I say I am. So today we are going to be making the sissy, <laughs> the sissy. Ah, this sassy hipster um, bag. This does require an 8 by 12 frame. I hear all of you out there with the 6 by 10 and 5 by 7. I honestly not sure that it benefits that small of a frame, but I can try it. I mean, you're talking the bag would be like that big. So anyway, this is the bag. Um, let me stand up so I can make sure you guys are seeing it. This is the bag. Did I zoom it out? There, let me go back to it. So it folds over. This is what the back looks like. Has a zipper pocket. This is all done in one hooping, by the way. Zipper pocket. Has little um, hoops here for a strap, a crossbody strap. I did adjust this, so when we stitch this out, these are going to be over a little bit farther. Um, then you have the big, deep pocket of the bag. And then when it's closed... You can fold it over, and this was my first rendition. I've since added a step to add an optional pocket here. Unfortunately, my son could not find that bag to bring it up and show you, but we're going to be stitching out the optional pocket, as well as the little uh, hanging flange, if I did it correctly, that we can go ahead and snap to the um, pocket to hold it closed. So this is what it is. Um, finished size is... With it folded closed, we are looking at seven, just under seven and a half inches wide and about six and a half inches tall. And then, of course, when it's open all the way, it's just about ten and a half inches tall. Um, I did use two zippers on it. Um, on my first one, I put the zipper this way. And I realized when you're actually holding it against your hip and you go to lift it open, for most people that zipper is going to be in the wrong direction. So I'm, I flipped it um, over on the pattern. You can do it either way. It doesn't matter. We do end up having a tiny little bit of a lip here. If you're not confident with sewing through, turning the zip, pulling the zipper out and sewing through it double layered, then just go ahead and leave the zipper flat and pull this as taut as you can but it's really not hard it's on the second to last stitch so it's not hard at all we are doing a mix of materials today we have this amazing infinity wars print it's going to be our focus panel mixed with tulip pink for our exterior both of those have been interfaced with Pellon sf101 or your favorite interfacing we have this pretty um pima cotton for the linings and the zipper and the interior. And of course, you know, I have to re fit some fine punk embroidery in. Ah, oh, the glitz. This is folded over. This will be the pocket on the exterior. It's just phenomenal. I'm, I just can't say enough. I love this stuff. And no, it does not. Let me try it again. I haven't been able to get it to rub off glitter. There's no glitter on there. Well, actually, there was a tiny little bit. Ooh, I lied. I did rub it really hard though, but it doesn't really rub off very much. Um, most of it is from the salvage. This first time I actually have gotten any to rub off. All right, so I've gone ahead and um, started with the, um, there I am. I promise I'm trying not to say um all the time. I've done the stitch out for the zippers and remember we're gonna reverse the zippers. So, my um, exterior is that stripe from Tulip Pink, so I'm going to use the navy down there for the zipper pocket on the back, and this black to go with the Infinity Wars fabric. So, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this out. Pretty simple. And if you've done any of my other patterns or watched any of my other videos, this is just the same thing all over. Like I have said before, not all zippers are equal in width. These two are. So make sure 
that you line up your zipper teeth with that middle line. That way your zipper is centered as, as much as you can. If you don't do that, then your zipper is going to, yeah, see these, these are slightly less. And if you don't do that, see that, that the, the placement line is exactly an inch because most zippers are an inch. These look to be about seven eighths inch. So what I do is I um, go ahead and get this stitched down on one end, center it, make sure it looks okay. And then before I stitch it down here, I'm just using that to hold it in place, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up, can you see the, that? yes you can. I'm gonna pull up the zipper tape and make sure, it's hard to see because this is dark, but make sure that center line is in line with your teeth. And then it won't matter what size your zipper is. There's a reason for my madness. And then you want to tape this down. Um, be careful. I forgot to mention, I'm using Pelon 360 Easy Tear Away. The reason I like this for the bag is because this is actually going to get st stuck inside the zipper pocket, between the zipper pocket and the exterior, and it's soft. Whereas the other stuff, the papery stuff, which I did use on the pink one, it feels more stiff than. Your mileage may vary if you want to keep that. Use that kind. Use your favorite. Tear away. All right, I'm putting these as close to the edge of the zipper as I can. The seam will probably sit through it, but that's okay. I just find if I don't do that extra little reinforcement, and again, I'm going to put this one in the other direction. If I don't do that extra little reinforcement, then the zipper can get a little bit jaggy as it's st stitching down. And we don't want a jaggy zipper. When you don't make sure it's down good, then when you go to um, press your pieces back and forth, they get ridgy or ripply. I said ridgy. I meant ripply. And we don't want ripply. We want a nice seam. We want it to look as if you sewed this on a regular sewing machine. That is our goal. And I'm being very gingerly with this tape because on my last run, I wasn't, and it started to come loose on the sides towards the end. And I don't want that. Now, I don't think this is perfect, but it's good enough, it's centered enough. So, all right. There we go. Everything's taped down. And I'm showing it to you upside down, but yeah. This is the way. It's, this seems to be better lighting than when I had the camera on the other side. Now this, I'm gonna actually put a piece of tape down on that because um, it's gonna, I'm afraid it's gonna bog down on that needle bar there. We're gonna move this out of the way in a little bit anyway. Just keep it out of the way. And again, you wanna make sure that your zipper is at least two inches wider so one inch on either side of that placement just to keep it out of the way and let's hope we don't have any more errors in our stitching i'm going to go ahead and stitch this in white just so you can see and again there's 24 color stops in this design you are going to use whatever colors match your project, your materials. I'm actually going to do everything in black. But the color stops are to stop your machine and take action. Now on the six needle machine, it'll keep going until it thinks it needs to stop. So I have to hit that reserve stop each time to tell it, no, no, keep going. And I got my cast of characters here, seam ripper, tweezers, scissors, pen. And I can see right now, see this is getting a little whipply right there. So I'm gonna hold this down a little bit. And I don't even know where I came up with the idea for this bag. I just was playing around and I was like, um, I saw a fold over bag somewhere else. and. When I was out and about, and I was like, hmm, 
why would you have a fold over bag? That whole top of it is wasted. And there was another sewist that I watched and she did one too. And I still had the same thought. Why would you do it? Well, I was just sitting there one day and I was like, I, I had this idea and it just it had to come out. And I was like, oh, I think this would be a really cute little hipster bag. All right. And there we go. Hope you can see all that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape just from these pieces. I will warn you, this tape on this stabilizer, I don't get much more than two uses out of it. You see it leaves a little residue on the back. Bummer. So I went through a whole pile of tape. All right, so now um, we're going to do our zipper tabs. Oh my goodness, I forgot to cut the zipper tabs. I'm such a silly person. I'm going off camera just one moment so I can cut the zipper tabs. I knew I was forgetting something. So, um, zipper tabs are just to make sure that, um, hold on a minute. Sorry guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hope you can hear me. Ding that. What did I do? Okay, I'm really messing up over here. Okay, I cut these the wrong size. I hope it'll work. I accidentally cut them two inches long. I think it's gonna be okay. I generally try to have a, a longer um, bit. So I'm going to put this back on here because it's going to pl stitch the placement for the zipper tab. And it's going to go on the front, the top and back. And, you know, it's not really probably needed on the bottom, but you can see it um, in the pocket if you were to twist it up. This is the old one. Oh, you can't see it in this one because I did it, but you can see it a little bit in there. It just finishes the zipper and it just gives a little bit more. Um, there I go with the um again. It gives um, a little bit more strength to the zipper inside. So you can barely see the line there. I thought I put black bobbin in there. I did, it's just not showing very much. So we're gonna tape um, one of these zipper tabs down against that placement line, right side down and tape it down. I'm actually gonna use a fresh piece of tape since it's gonna be on the bottom. All right, just butt it right up against that little mark. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the top. And remember that I just totally lost. Oh, I forgot something. See, can I get through one video without forgetting something? I'm just going to pull these tips. You need to move the zipper first because otherwise the zipper won't open. I'm just going to pull this little stitch over here. Oh. Actually, it didn't because I used a thicker stitch. It didn't even stick very right there. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the zipper open. <laughs> Kimberly, please, can I get through one video without messing something up? Okay, and I'm not looking at the instructions. That's why you're gonna be following along the instructions. Okay, so I've opened up the zipper, moved it to the middle, and I've taped that down. Make sure it doesn't come dislodged on the bottom. And hopefully our tabs are big enough because I mucked that up too. One of these days I'll learn how to edit these videos. Right, I'm going to do white just so you can see it, hopefully.
and I do one side at a time because otherwise you're constantly moving the frame back and forth, back and forth, and that just seems like extra work on your machine that's unneeded. It's easier just to do one at a time. Okay, so then we're gonna turn over the frame and we're gonna fold the zipper tab back. And you really don't wanna fold it too tight because if you pull, pull it too tight, you're gonna see this, the thread. So just pull it in there. I really wish I could see without, see that you guys are seeing everything. Let me see if I can rearrange this a little bit so I can see. I think that might work better. Okay, same thing here. At this point, you can actually go ahead and cut off this extra tape, and that's in the instructions. Okay, and we're gonna cut off the other side the same thing when we get to it. Fold this back. Again, don't fold too tightly, because if you do, you're gonna see those threads. So just fold it. Put it back on. This time I'm gonna use black because I'm top stitching everything in black today. And this top stitch will then add another layer of reinforcement to that zipper. Because we are cutting off the mechanical stop for that zipper. And we don't want the zipper pole to fly off of it when we're using the zipper pocket. I know, on a small bag like this, I'm using just standard number three zippers. But you could use a handbag zipper for the top. Um, I think um, you have to be careful though because I digitized it for this um, so if the handbag zipper teeth is much thicker um, it may not work so I would recommend it's just a small bag to stick with this one okay now we're gonna move over and we're gonna do the same thing um, actually I'm gonna use black on the other side and I'm not going to show you this on the frame. It's in the instructions. We're doing the same exact thing. Front tab, bottom tab. And see now, because I'm doing one at a time, it didn't have to go all the way over to the frame, to the other side. So again, right side down. Find that little placement. Center it on here. Get a fresh piece of tape. I know I've done other patterns where I didn't do the pull or the bottom. And when you pulled out at the zipper, you could actually see the bottom of the tape. And I just saw in some group they recommended that you use the zipper tapes on the bottom too because it looks more professional. So I've just started incorporating that. To be perfectly honest, if you don't want to do that step, you could skip it. Just do the front, the top zipper pose, or zipper tabs. But this is what my pattern is written, and so that's why I'm showing you. But you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and do the top stitch now. Or, I'm sorry, this is the tack down stitch. Oh, don't want to do... I don't want to do white because those colors it might show through if I pull the tape too hard which I already said we're not going to do but you know how that goes I'm going to have a couple people testing this right now today is uh, Good Friday Happy Easter if you are a religious person we are not Christians um, we are agnostic I'm not really agnostic, but there's not really a way to describe me. I'm spiritual. I believe in God and a superpower, but I just don't believe in man-made religions. But I don't care if you do. Everybody has a right to believe how they want to believe. If you want to worship trees, you go out there and worship those trees. Because we live in the United States of America, and that's what it's about. Indirectly, there are people who worship trees, you know. Um, green peace and all that. But I like to teach my son about Christianity. I was raised a Christian, Baptist as a matter of fact. 
Toledo, Ohio. We went to a, a Baptist church. It was pretty funny. We lived with my grandparents, right? And my grandma was actually Catholic. And my mother, although she wasn't practicing, she was raised Lutheran. And my grandpa, he was raised Baptist. So we had a cousin who started getting us going to the church. And they picked us up on this church bus and all that good stuff. And I had been going to that church since I was two years old. So for a few moments in time, my grandma convinced my mom, oh, they need to be Catholic. I don't remember the whole story, but that was grandma's doing. So there's five of us kids, all in with my grandparents. Um, my oldest brother, he never could, he never did church. Could explain a lot about him. So I've gone ahead and did the top stitch. So anyway, my grandma decided she was going to get us going to her church, her Catholic church. It lasted about two weeks of trying to get four young kids to sit together in mass. Oh, it was pretty funny. I think, I don't know, you guys tell me, do they still, um, do children go to um, mass in Catholic churches or do they have Bible school now like we had in the Baptist church? In the Baptist church, we had our Sunday school and we went to our Sunday school um, when the grown-ups went to the adult church, the, the sermons. But anyway, so, oops. I got a little salvage on there. I'm going to click this over. So we're going to take, this is the inside pocket for the external zipper pocket. And we're going to lay this. I should have highlighted this for you. I used black bobbin thread tape so you could see it. So we are going to lay this. So this is the bottom this way. This is the bottom of that bottom zipper. And this is going to be face down. Sorry, I'm using the same fabric color. But this is face down, and we're going to tape it in place. And I know I'm a, I'm a jibber-jabber, and I know other people don't really talk during their videos. They just show you what they're doing, but it's taking me seconds each time to do this stuff, and you guys don't want to just listen to me breathing. So I'm a jibber-jabber. Anyway, saying, so we do celebrate Easter in my, in my home with my son, and I tell him about what it means to Christians. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know too much about the other the other religions like um I know there's Passover for Judaism but I don't know too much about that but I teach my son about it and we just talk about it but as, for our family we just treat it like a family holiday this is a time of reverence and to think about how you know like another Thanksgiving and that's how we treat it and I try hard to be respectful of others' beliefs and teach my son of others' beliefs. Okay, now we need our, and this is all spelled out for you. I actually um, labeled the, the, pat, the pieces. If I was looking at my pattern, I could tell you what I labeled them. Let me see. Let me pull this pattern up. Down here, I got my laptop. Just so I can tell you. So we did our um, our interior pockets, which is AA, and now this is BB. This is eight and a half by six and a half inch. Yes, I am using stripes. I hope that it works out for me. Okay, so now we're going to um, one thing I didn't tell you. You need to pull your zipper pull over here. There's a few places where you need to pull the zipper pull back and forth. Um, because we're going to start stitching over here and we don't want to hit that zipper pole. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I think, I oh know I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. I think it's going to start over there. Sorry. Let me see what my instructions say. I'm looking at my screen and I can tell where the, where it's going to start. Okay. So... We're all the way down here. Step seven. Okay. Pull is to the left. Yes, that's correct. So the zipper pull should be to the left. We're going to put our fabric face down. I did cut this generously. Um, I went really skimpy on one of the patterns, and something just didn't work out for somebody. And 
So I learned my lesson. No, nope. make it a little bit generous. I'm just gonna tape this down. To be honest, you don't need to tape it too much um, because usually on these, there's enough width, but okay, so we have it taped on the bottom, taped on the top. All right. So, as I mentioned, we're gonna need to um, move our zipper pull at one point. I'm gonna use white. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And it's gonna start, and once we get halfway through, I'm gonna hit my stop button. If you need to cut off because you don't have confidence in doing this on your machine, you go right ahead and cut off. But I don't need to cut off because I, I can do it without it. But the top stitch is going to come along anyway, so if you have a, a breach in that stitch because you did a stop and cut it off, that's perfectly fine. Okay, I'm going to move this tape out of the way. Now I'm going to reach in here. You know, I'm going to cut it off so you can see because I can't show you. Can't hold it and zoom in at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna reach under here, and you don't need to remove this from your system to do this. Just lift it up, and then hopefully you can see me. I think you can see. We're gonna pull this with our tweezers, and we're gonna pull it all the way over to the other side now. Well, now I got my finger in there, but you know what I mean. You're gonna have your tweezers in there. I'm gonna put that piece of tape back. And then you're going to go ahead and hit your button and start it again. Now, I'm going to make sure I didn't dislodge my bottom because I pulled it off. As I said, you don't need to do that. Okay. And we're going to continue stitching. And you will do this four times. And in my example, I show you I forgot to do it on the top stitching. And I got a little bump in it. Okay. So now we're going to turn this over and you know this the threads on the bottom can get a little bit messy when you're doing the top stitching you might want to pull the thread up I'll show you that right quick because people have asked about that now I'm going to lightly gingerly because this is loose right here so I'm lightly gingerly going to finger cross that with my fingernail because if you do not press it and you're gonna get something like this. This is gonna be over there and this is gonna be over here. No, 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 you don't want that. You need it to be even. So lightly press it with your fingernail and pull down and make sure it's taped down tautly. And tape it down and tape it down. And I'm gonna move these zipper tab tape over here because these little corners like to come loose while you're stitching. And then you're going to get mad because it's going to get bumped up. Okay, So see it's nice and even. You can see this is pretty even across there. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. And on this side, because you're against the table, you can actually use a little bit more firmness. And you can use a, a pressing or boning tool if you want. I have not tested this pattern with um, vinyls. This little fabric, glitter gem fabric, or I'm sorry, glitz fabric is my first time testing with it. But it's not significantly um, thicker than the interfaced cotton, so I feel safe. Go ahead and remove these little pieces of tape out of here now because sometimes it can get stuck in there. And I'm okay, I don't need to tape it. You can actually put pins in here to hold it in place, but I'm just gonna follow along. I think we're okay. And we're gonna leave our zipper pull over here. I believe that's what the instructions say. Let me make sure. All right. Uh, I didn't mention it in the instructions, but I believe that's the case. We're going to leave it to the left. If you need to guide this with your tweezers, go ahead. So we're going to top stitch everything in black. So, and I'm just going to kind of guide it since I didn't tape it down. 
but it's pressed pretty well, so I don't think it needed the tape. You can just guide it along or put some pins and tape in it. Okay, we're halfway through. I'm gonna stop. And if you need to use your long tweezers or fingernails or bamboo stick or whatever, move that over because it could be enough for your presser foot to get stuck on it. These actually are really narrow little feet, but it still was enough to bump it out a little bit on my last design. And this tape is useless to me right now. Okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the other half of the zipper pocket and the middle of the bag. This is not a full um, layer of fabric because it's going to actually um, get covered up. Okay, so go ahead and, um, oh, and I, I, I told you I was gonna show you how to do that. Pull up. And I forgot. Sorry about that. But you can see what I'm talking about. See, it's all naughty there. So we'll do better on the next one. Now we use the other part of the pocket. And this time we can just tape it down. We're not going to move this one again. We're going to um, just leave it folded this way the whole time. We're not top stitching it and closing it back down. We could do that. Um, but it doesn't really matter because we're not reaching inside the top of the zipper. So why take yourself off the frame more than you have to? So again, I'm doing the corners here because they like to stick down and I was pinning this from the other side, but I forgot pins in the last one. It's in the pictures in there to prove it. I'm not doing it this time. So I'm just gonna take these corners down Maybe one little piece right there. Use as much tape or pins as you feel comfortable with. Just be very careful when you're pushing on here so you don't do that. So there we go. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on the front. Um, let's see where am I going to start next. So we want the zipper pull over here to the left again. And then we're going to lay this down. It's about the same. And this time, it's going to be even with the top of the bottom zipper. See that? I'm going to put a little piece of tape in here. Just a minute to hold it. Okay, put it back on here. Change my color to white. Make sure nothing came loose down there. We're on step 11 now. Oh, I, I was wrong. So, hold on. So, this should be to the right. I don't know if I have that in the instructions. Let me double check my instructions real quick. I have that wrong, it should be on the right. Okay, let me fix that real quick in my Word document so I don't have to do it again. Um, my battery died last night when I was doing this test stitch, so I took notes on the modifications that I need, and I obviously wrote the wrong thing. Okay. Should be on the... Oh, this, I must be looking at the wrong step in the PDF. This is right. Oh, sorry, I have it right. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get halfway across. We're gonna stop. We're gonna get our tweezers, and we're gonna reach in here, and we're gonna move that zipper over. 
And this is actually exactly the same thing you do in the sewing world. Okay, make sure this is still even when you lay it back down. And continue. Always keep your fingers away from that area. Always. And please, for my sake and everybody else's sake, if you hurt yourself, my heart breaks for you. But please do not post your gory pictures on Facebook. <clears throat> now, we're not going to mess around with the <clears throat> back. We're leaving that down. If you want to post your pictures, put it in the comments and save us all. Now, see, I'm feeling like a handbag zipper will not work with this design. I would need to redigitize it and retest it because I'm going to show you why. I'm going to grab a handbag zipper and I'm going to show you. I made this really, to make it clean and neat, I made it pretty close to the, um, where are my handbag zippers? I made it really close to the edge. That's just the look I was going for. And the handbag zipper's teeth is slightly fatter than, here's one. This is a double one. I don't want a double one. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing I can show you. So the handbag zipper teeth are a little bit um, wider You see that? And here's a um uh, can never I have all these zippers in here. So here's the number three, and here's the handbag zipper. And it's just slightly wider. It might actually be okay. Actually, I said that it won't, and then it might actually be okay. It's not too much different. So I might have made a liar. So I would just recommend that you try it. The tape part here does not matter. See how it's wider? That doesn't matter. It's only the teeth. So you want to make sure those teeth are going to fit in there. And I actually I think it would. Ah, I kind of regret that I didn't try it. Okay, so now I'm going to finger press this down. And again, I want to make it as pretty and neat as I can. And I, I cut this graciously. You can trim it down if you want. I'm going to tape it right there. And we're going to start, and I think I need to move the zipper pull over to the other side. Let me double check where I'm starting at. And again, I'm going to switch to black because I'm top stitching in black today. Let's see where it starts. Yeah, it needs to stay over there. And then when we get close to it, we'll stop it. Trailing threads drives me crazy. Okay, stop. Because if I do not stop, it's going to bump off that a slight little tiny bit. It will bump off of it. And I'll have a little ridge. And look in the pictures in the PDF. I show you that. It's very subtle, but it's there. Okay, it's out of the way. Continue. It actually takes longer to prepare the materials for this bag than it does to make the bag. Oh my gosh, I am so impressed with myself. That top stitch went almost perfectly on that stripe. Didn't even try. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've completed that step. Now we're gonna open the mid pa the panel upwards and top stitch, we did that. So that was step 12. Okay, now we're on to step 13. And this is a D-ring strap placement. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that in white so you can see it. And you'll note in the instructions that I um, call for three inch strips, but I'm actually using just about two and a quarter inch myself because I want it tighter. Because I'm using this machine, I can do that. But on your machine, let me pull out the presser foot. If you have a wider presser foot, you need to be able to make sure that it's going to bypass this. And these are going to go here, and then it's going to top stitch. So I'm going to show you. Let me tape them down. We can move this now because it's done. So just put your ring inside here. 
I don't know which is the right and wrong. I used navy bobbin and black top, so I'm going to do this one just because I think it looks cuter that side. All right, so we are going to tape this right in the middle of that line. I made it an inch because you might want to use an inch D-ring. I'm using three quarters inch. So make sure that you center it over that line. You just have to eyeball it, it's not difficult. Okay, do you see the lines right there? And we're gonna center it right there and tape it down. Right abutted to that, to that seam. And look and make sure it's centered over it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stitch over this spot two more times. When we're gonna tack this down, then when we add the extra panel, we're gonna fold it up here. So you see, you need to have clearance for your foot to be able to get close to that. See how much of a difference that is? My foot's gonna be taking up just this much space right here. But if your foot is this big, it's gonna take up that space. So you need it bigger. So that's why in the instructions I put three inches. So if you're using one of these brother um, machines, I didn't even try that, and look how I did this stripe. Yeah, like I am, you can, make it a little shorter. I find it looks a little bit more attractive if it's shorter. So if you are using the same kind of machine as me, you can do the shorter one. Tape it down. Keep that tape there. It's okay if we tape through it. And then we're going to do the tack down. I didn't have that. I used, told you this tape doesn't do well. I should have used a fresh piece of tape. Don't want that to come loose. Because what are you going to be tempted to do if that came loose on you? You're going to be tempted to reach inside there and grab it really fast. And then what's going to happen? That needle is going to go through your finger. And we do not want that. So fresh tape. Kimberly. Glad I caught it. And you can see this is getting really close to my hardware. Oh, I got the wrong color. Darn it. Okay. Forgot to change it. But see the difference? This I did get pretty close here too. But these are a little bit taller. The next part is going to be the tricky part. Because Kimberly was smart enough to do this directional thing one more time. So, um, it's actually two more steps. <laughs> so this one um, is not in the PDF. This was an added thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put um, white so you can see it. This is an added step, it's optional. If you stitch this out, it's fine, it won't hurt anything. But we're gonna add a little tab, and I'm gonna eyeball how far I want down. I made this too long because I wasn't sure. I think I made it um, four inches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a snap here and a snap in the pocket so we can snap it down. So however far you want it to go, I'm eyeballing this right now. I think, I think that's going to make me happy. So I'm actually going to just put a little mark right there so I know where I want that to line up. Where's the pin at? So, okay. So, and you can leave the extra tab in there. We're going to remove it later. Oh, goodness, I taped it there and I can't even see it. I'm sorry, guys. I, I can see it on the back. I'm going to use a pin and pin through so I can see where it's at because I can't see it on the tape. Okay. It's so subtle right there. It got right in there. So I'm going to take this off the hoop. All right. Um, we're going to, it's going to sound backwards, but we're going to put it like this on here and mark it where my marker is and then we're going to tape it down try to make sure it's even and the reason we're doing it this way is because <clears throat> when we have our bag this is actually going to go fold down into the front 
So, and this is going to get covered up with our panel. So we don't need to, um, let's put this tape down here. And I'm going to put another piece over here. I'm actually going to measure, um, based on the zipper, make sure I have that centered right. So that's about three and a half. Let's see. It's a little bit too far over. This is only three. Yeah, it's, it needs to go over a little bit more because I can't see my line, so I'm just kind of winging it right now. You might want to change that thread color to something that shows up better for you. But since I have my placement lines, everything's centered off of there, I can make sure it's right. So that's just at the three mark. Oh, what did I do? I went backwards. I went the wrong way, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Okay. You might want to just skip this step. I mean, me trying to make it look fancy. Okay, try this again. So, that just three and a quarter. Ah, there we go. That's perfect. If you could see the step, I actually put a little tick in it even. But I used the wrong color thread. I should have used a red or something so you could see it better. Okay, I'm going to put just another piece of tape right here to hold it in place. So we're going to have, imagine this is the zipper is going to be the bottom of your bag. This is going to hang down. So we're going to have a hang down of about two inches, including the ring. This is how you can determine what you want. So if we look here, two inches, including the ring, is going to take us to right about here, I think that's going to be too far, so I'm actually going to bump it a little bit more. And you, it's up to you how far you want it down. And I had it right the first time because I didn't have it there. These are my mind. But I moved it. I messed it up. Okay. Now, that's better. It's going to hang down. Just a little cute decoration. Okay, now we need our zipper pocket and our focus fabric. So our main exterior zipper pocket. Again, I'm using gray. And then we're going to go ahead and tape this. So it's going to go here and then fold down. So we need to tape it upside down. And you can see that line your original placement line. Make sure it's centered on here. And this is where having the pins at the top is really helpful because this material is going to want to try and move away from you. So I'm actually going to reach through and it will be out of the sewing space, so that's fine. The sewing area. And I'm going to put this in here. Am I still recording? Because somebody sent me a message Oh, I am good. And what I mean then is carefully, gingerly turn this over, and then you can take a couple of pins and reach through here and put them in there. And that's going to help keep this fabric from shifting underneath you. But you don't want the pins on the bottom, because if you put the pins on the bottom, it's going to scrape your machine bed. Okay, what's my screen doing here? Okay, you see? Even there. Now we're going to take, this is the tricky part. So, this is going to have to be like this when we turn this over. So we actually need to sew it upside down so that when the seam is down and we sew it up, it's going to be right. So, it should look upside down. Um, in other words, the top should be facing the top of the frame and that's actually correct and I'm gonna go ahead and mark the middle of this just with a little crease and I'm gonna go ahead and mark oh, I don't have the white pencil that's not going to show up. 
marker will not show up. Where did my pencil go? Just had it. All right, let's use the My Punk 43 pen and see if it'll show up. So we're going to go ahead and, um, I measured earlier and it ended up being seven and a half, so 3.75, and actually I have this tape right here, so that'll help me. 3.75, so right here is the middle. And you don't need to do this if you're using just a solid piece of fabric, even if it's directional. But I actually have a, a focus fabric here. So again, I'm going to go ahead and line that up. And it's going to be lined up with the zipper. So I'm eyeballing it. I personally think this bag is going to be flipping cool. I hope I'm right. right. And it's going to go through this tape. That's fine. I'm trying to remember and tell you guys everything like if you were a brand new person doing this because I don't want to assume you know how to do any of this. Okay, we're going to return this to the frame and you see what's happening already? I hope you can see. Can you see? Yes, you can. See, this is already getting out of whack. So that's why we put those pins there. So make sure this is pulled out of your um, path. We don't need to worry about um, we don't need to worry about the zipper pull at this point because it's already out of our way. And this is gonna tack that down and also reinforce the little fob. And it might be a little bit hard to go over that thickness. If you don't think your machine can do it, then use a piece of FOE or something. It's thinner, and I think I can tell that this went wonky. I didn't have it taped enough. See, it went wonky. So I'm gonna pull that out and redo that least piece. Like I say, do as I say, not as I do. I should have had more tape on there and I wouldn't have had that issue. I'm going to pull this tape up off from the zipper right now. We don't need that anymore. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I see what happened. It got wonky from going over that, that zipper, the tab. So I'm going to put a little bit extra tape here. And it'll tape through it, sew through it, and that's okay, but I don't want it going wonky again. So hopefully it's going to go down enough. I'm going to back up. And don't worry if it's not perfect because our top stitch will help cover this up. I think my little thing there might have made it a little too wonky. Oops. I forgot to hit the reserve stop. Okay, so there we go. Hope y'all can see that. And then we go on to the back and pull these pins out so you can fold it down. Remove the tape. And go ahead and remove the tape over here as well because this is going to get covered up now and we don't want to bury tape in there. This tape does get gummy over time if you leave it. So I'm going through a lot of tape because again this tape doesn't give me good. Now we want to do a light finger press again. We don't want to make our disrupt our um I did it again. Um we don't want to disrupt our stabilizer. Right, I'm going to sew this down here and remember, put a little pieces of tape there on those corners because they like to push up. And we're going to do this to top stitch and then we're going to pull this up out of the way again when we um, do the hem, the seam. See, nice and even, tape. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to remove all this tape that we had to use. You can go ahead and remove the trim that tab a little bit if you like. I'm going to trim it just a tiny bit. Um, 
I'm actually going to grade it. Grade means you just trim off so that the two layers are a little bit different. Okay. And remember, this is going to be buried inside here, so it's not going to matter. Now we're going to fold this down to do the top stitching. And again, we're going to go ahead and finger press this. And it is a tiny bit wonky because of that tab, so I hope it'll be okay. So keep that in mind when you do this to use something thinner. I did a standard tab, and I wish what I should have done was done um, one and a half inches and then just um, left the pieces raw in the center instead of what I traditionally do with folding it in. Okay, I think it's okay though. I'm gonna test my zipper real quick here though because this got really close. It's okay, I'm gonna try and pull this a little bit more taut. There we go. And hopefully in the end it'll work out. Okay, I'm gonna get one more piece of tape over here because I'm anticipating again that it's gonna go wonky over that. Put this inside. Make sure nothing came loose there. Let's check the PDF so I can make sure I know what step we're on. We should be on step 17. We're not, we don't have that many st more steps left, to be honest. And again, it's taking longer because I'm taking the time to explain all this to you. When you're actually doing it the first time, it might take you a little time. But after that, it's not going to take you any time at all. Okay. Yep, top stitch 17. Again, we're using black. Oh, uh, why is it doing this? Oh, I don't know what I did. Oh, I know when I had to back up. And again, if you feel like you need to let guide, use these tweezers. Better for that to go through these than your finger. And if we go through our finger, we're going to put the picture in the comments. Okay, now we're going to pull the lining up because right now we're going to create a hem up here if we don't pull the lining up we're gonna stitch through it and it's fine if you do if you don't mind but I'm using black bobbin thread and I don't really want to see that and here I am again forgetting to show you how to do the pull up on the bobbin and now I have a messy ugly bobbin there I think most of that's gonna get covered up but still okay so I'm just gonna pull this out of the way and I'm actually gonna use those pins again to um, secure it from the other side It doesn't need to be all the way out of the way, but why not? So just use those pins to secure it. I'll show you in a minute. So it's out of our way. Now this is the tricky part. You want to fold over your hem so that it meets and just covers those basting stitches that we used for the D-rings. Take this tape off. I'm going to remove this tape over here, too. I should have done that before. Uh, got a little bit in the seam. That's okay. Got it out. Remove your tape as you go along when you can. I don't always point that out in the instructions. Okay, so what we need to do, I'm going to start it, is oh, remove this tape. Woo! And we might be able to reuse that tape. Nope. Because it wasn't on the stabilizer. Okay, these are the basting marks I'm talking about. So we want our hem to go right over right over that basting mark. So I'm going to do it a little bit here off camera just so I can make sure it's working and then I'll pull it up closer and show you. And I oh I got really tight on this. My hem is off. Shoot. Okay, I cut it too short. That's okay. We're going to make it work. This is my fault. My cutting is wrong. 
So I think I wrote in instructions to do four and a quarter, but it really should be four and a half. All right. All right, and I'm gonna grab some tape along the way and tape that seam down. Now it's only harder for me because I goofed. So I am ended up having a very scant quarter inch in here. But you're not gonna goof and you're gonna do it right. And we actually have, because I have that striped fabric, I can actually gauge where the seams should be in the center pretty well. But what you wanna do then, after you get this all tucked under, and I'm gonna tape it along the way and finger press, get your ruler and make sure it matches. So again, if we go through the tape, it's fine. And especially if you're using a focus fabric like I am, you really want it to be even. That's what's really going to show up and not look so good. All right, one last piece. The, it's a little bit off because they're going over that tab. It's wonky. Apparently wonky is my new word. Got it pretty even. No, nope, don't. Right there, it's not. Sorry, I gotta get my shoulder in here in your face. Sorry about that. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you show the little stitching on the tab because you're gonna use matching color. I goofed up there and I actually used um, silver and I meant to use black. So it mine's gonna show a little bit and I'm gonna live with that. So I used, should have used matching color. Okay. So, and then when you can get your ruler, you can actually kind of double check and make sure it's pretty even across. So it's just under that four mark. So three and seven eighths. I have a lot of tape in there. But see, I have this, this kind of butted it up a little bit. All right. Now, carefully remount this. We're on the home front now. Okay, make sure our lining is. I'm gonna change it to black. And I'm gonna very carefully monitor this as it sews along to make sure that it doesn't come ajar. And man, I am barely escaping by because I made it too short. Was there. Right. Sorry about that. See, it, it came up right there, so I need to redo that section. Not ideal to have to pull out a bean stitch. But it happens. Like I said, I can't get through one video without making a mistake. You know, this is just life. Mistakes happen and you move on. You fix it and move on. I make mistakes at work all the time. I don't know about you guys, but I do. Not happy about it. I actually am really not happy about it. I do not do well with making mistakes at work. I'm worse about it at work than I am at home. I can make it mistakes at home. I don't just get mad at myself. But at work, I'm very, very perfectionistic. And I do not like making mistakes. And everybody like, it's okay, Kimberly. It happens once in a while. And I'm like, nope, it doesn't happen to me, guys. <laughs> I don't make mistakes. And this is only because I cut my panel too short. So... 
you're not going to have this issue because you're going to cut your panel correctly. Four and a half. Okay, let me put a piece of tape through there again. Let's see if I can salvage that. And I did say, I warned you, this was the tricky part. I'm actually going to sew my machine way down too. That's going to help because I can see right here it looks like it might get a little bumpy. I think it's okay. And you see how close it got to my D ring. So keep that in mind when you're using that D ring light. You want it to be a little bit more attractive than do the short ones if you have a big machine like this with the smaller presser foot. Okay, I'm moving all this tape out of here. Now we can go ahead and turn our frame over. I am a little bit out of whack there, but I'm going to live with that. It still looks adorable, and I don't think anybody's going to care. They're just going to be looking at Robert Downey Jr. there. Now, pull your pins out, don't forget. And we're gonna flip this over and tape this back down. And I'm, again, I'm not gonna pin it because I learned my lesson. Forgot to remove those pins. Have I said um enough yet? I don't know if I've said enough, I said it again. Okay, I'm gonna pull in the center here and bring this out. And these corners are not important, but down here it is, so. I'm actually going to just put a tiny little piece of tape just to hold that corner down. And now we're going to put our back, our exterior lining. Now, the last time we lined it up here, so we're going to line it up here now. And I don't even think there's a right and wrong side on this cotton from Joann's. It feels heavenly. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm using it for the lining, but I got it on sale, so it's fine. Tape it down, and I'm going to put a piece of tape down there at the end so I can avoid pinning. And you may need to put a piece of tape there too. I don't find it needed um, on my bed, on my machine, but you may need to. Okay, so tape it all down. Okay, turn it over. Now we want to get this out of our way. So. We're gonna pull a big piece of tape. I'm gonna pull this all the way as far as you can and tape it down really good because we don't want that to interfere with sewing the next few steps. And I'm actually, I'm using two pieces. And you can pull this off now. We're not quite ready to pull that, open that zipper up yet. Okay, so you have gone ahead and taped that down out of our way. Now get our exterior, and the same thing, it's going to line up with the top zipper tape. And I'm going to tape that down around this because I feel that it might bump out. So keep that in mind. Remember, your presser foot's going to go along here, and if it's too wide, you may you need to make that longer if you're not using a six needle machine. Or just skip that step altogether. It's just decorative. It's not needed. The other thing is, when you're doing this, I just slowed my machine down so it's a good time. When you're doing this, go slow and make sure you are paying attention to the machine and if it looks like you're gonna hit something then go ahead and hit that stop button and reassess ok 
Okay, and we are almost done, I promise you. So I'll remove this tape. We are up to step 20. And if these little stitches come a little bit loose, it's not the end of the world because the top stitch will hold it down. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the back. tape all over the place. Okay, again, we want to lightly press that with our fingernail and make sure it's pulled taut. Oops, not that taut, I just pulled stitches out. I'm going to pin it out of the stitch path area to help hold it in place. And I guess I could show you that better. I figured you guys know how to do that. So I'm just coming up here out of the stitch path and put the pin there. Make sure it's definitely out of that stitch path from your presser foot. Now we're going to open this up and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to press along here with our fingernail. Make sure it's as tight and as even as you can. How did I get a thread in there? Tight and even as you can. And you could actually put the pins through the front there too. Help hold that in place tightly. The, the longer you take for this step and make it neat, the more professional your pouch is going to be. And see, I can see right there. I, when I went to move it, I could see there was a little bit of a slack there. And slack means you're going to have a messy, any slack here, this is not going to stitch down properly and it's gonna look messy. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and top stitch. This is top stitching both the bottom and the top, and I'm gonna show you um, how to pull that needle thread up. So I'm gonna use my seam ripper or tweezers and pull this thread out, hold it. I'm gonna hit the unlock. It's going to come down here and travel, and then I'm going to let take one stitch. I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to pull the stitch up, and then either use your tweezers or your finger. I have the bobbin thread here. Can you see that in the camera? I have both of them right there. I'm going to hold them, and then I'm going to go ahead and start again. And I'm holding it all the way out of the stitch path, so I'm not my fingers aren't anywhere near there. And now as soon as it locks on, then I can stop and I can trim that, that thread away. And when you do this, regardless if you're doing it on this pouch or on a snap tab, it's going to stop that gobbly goop of thread that you get on the bottom of your project. So next, we're going to go ahead and leave the lining out of the way and we're gonna place the placements for our pocket. You can adjust the pocket to wherever you want. Um, we are gonna be putting the pocket on so it looks like we're backwards. I'm gonna use white so you guys can see this. We don't wanna sew through the lining. It actually doesn't matter because um, I'm going to pull the lining down now too because this these placements are up outside of the um, stitch, the final stitch. So I don't, let me see what the instructions say. My computer went to sleep on me. All right. It's always helpful to follow along with the instructions. <laughs> and I did forget to mention, but it's in the instructions. If you wanted to add custom embroidery to this panel you could still do it now but you want to do it before you put that lining down the bottom of the lining um let's see I'm sorry before the the first lining it's in the instructions follow that along that's if you want to add any custom embroidery okay Top stitch. Okay. 
No, leave the lining out of the way for right now. Okay, I was right. Okay, so again, this is not in the stitch area. When you flip your bag over, this pocket is going to be right here. So you want to make sure where you want that pocket. It could actually go all the way up to this fold. I get, I'm saying don't make it any higher than an inch above the zipper. But you can place the pocket wherever you want. It's just going to baste it down. Um, if you want it this high, then you know you have to pull this all the way up to reach. If you want it down this low, this would be nice for um, to slide your checkbook or whatever in. So you make that choice. I put the placement marks, and what I would recommend is you can either line up the pocket. Here's the white, the white placement lines. You can line it up with the top or the bottom. I'm going to line it up with, I think I'm going to go with the bottom. Because this is going to fold down. Um, it's going to be this far away from this. Actually, I'm going to go with the top and line it up right with that silver line. And again, you wanna, um, this is where I went wrong, guys. I put pins right here and I forgot to remove them. You wanna make sure this is so holding it down really good because it would come loose on you. So, and you don't want that to happen. But you also don't wanna forget your, the stitches are gonna be on the side, so I'm putting this right in the middle. You don't wanna forget pins in it. And this looks backwards right now because it's on the same side as the zipper. We're going to flip it to the other side. So make sure you have the side, if you have different color bobbin, you want the wrong side facing up because it's going to flip inside out and beyond the other side it'll be the right side. So if it's not the same, I don't recommend you do it that way. Just use the same so you're not confused. Okay, make sure our lining is out of the way again. And now this is going to baste that pocket down, just so it's nice and secure. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do our... Um, lining on the back we're going to free it up because we need to cut the zipper apart if you don't pull the lining down you potentially could cut into the lining and we don't want to do that I'm leaving that tape in place because I do not want this to move while we're stitching this. You can pull this tape out of the way now. And we're going to, oh, uh, we, we haven't stitched down though this yet. We're not doing the zipper yet. I forgot to stop. We're going to open up this zipper. Oh yeah, we are. I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind. I'm getting tired. So. Open up both the zippers, make sure they're at least in the middle. Remove these pins. Remember we had pins right here too. Okay, now we're gonna pull this down out of the way for right now. Just hold it out of the way. Look, make sure that this didn't come on. See what happened, it went gobbly goop. Make sure it's still underneath there. And I didn't show you because we took the time to pull that thread up. Well, now we got it on the, the knotting at the end, but we don't have a knot there at the beginning. Oh, that's the bottom. This is the one we just did. See? Nice and clean. Okay. Make sure both of these are down. And again, do not use pins, Kimberly. We're just holding this down for just one second, and then we're going to pull it down. So what we want to do is we want to free our zipper. I know it's scary, but don't be scared. There's only two steps left, so this is fine. So reach in here. Can I zoom in a little bit? And just hit your seam ripper and pull just to the 
top of the original placement line and use your seam ripper and go along and see why we want the lining out of the way because otherwise you'll you'll cut it if you don't want to use your seam ripper you can use your scissors your small little scissors this usually works okay with the seam ripper we're going to cut all along the top carefully and then we're going to go ahead and cut bend this down the side and we could have cut that extra tape away a lot earlier but do you see how where it ends there we're going to trim that away and the lining is right back there so be very careful you don't want to cut into the lining so I'm just going to push that lining out of the way a minute and I'm holding this up so you can see better but you're going to do this flat on your surface and you need it cut to the middle of the zipper and you can see underneath there the shadow of your lining so you don't cut it okay that side and then we're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on this side. Again, we're going to pull it and make sure the lining is not going to get cut. And we're going to cut away the zipper there. And it's hard for me to do this standing, holding it up. Just cut it. I'm going to put this down so I can finish it. And cut it away. And the seam ripper is actually probably easier because you can control it a little bit better than these zippers. <laughs> zippers? Scissors. All right, I missed a section here. All right, I know it's really scary, but it's okay. Trust me, it's okay. There we go, it's free. Now what we wanna do is we wanna fold the zipper down on top of itself. So these two zipper tapes should be even and it's folded down so that they're right on top of each other the teeth should be together like that and then you're going to tape it down use as much tape as you need to hold that in place it's only going to sew around the edge so you don't need to worry about the inside but if you don't tape it on the inside then it could come loose on the edges so tape it to the frame and then tape it to the the project itself so again I'm gonna go ahead and, and it's gonna go through the tape that's okay now I show this in the instructions when you go to stitch this because I anticipate that you might not want to do that if you don't want to tear it away what you're gonna do is you're gonna just fold it down you're not going to cut it away and you're going to fold it down as as much as you can it's going to be flat and hold it in place so because i anticipate you doing that the stitch is actually going to go off the project so when you go to put this down on your machine know that and so put a piece of tear away scrap tear away underneath that part of your needle and needle plate so it doesn't get hung up in there because it could potentially get knotted. And I'm going to go ahead and pull down here and tape this so it helps keep it taut. Okay? See? Right above it, right above it. Not scary, but do make sure you have it in the right thing. Now we want to make sure that we pull this no, we don't pull this up yet, sorry. Leave that as it is. <laughs> Leave the lining alone for right now. Okay, put it back on here. Sorry, the tape is getting all gobbly goop. Oh, see what happened? Ooh, I didn't even catch that. It came loose. I think it's gonna be okay. That's why my lining was messed up earlier. I'm gonna just break it free because this is gonna get double stitched over anyway. This was our basting stitch for the pocket. I'm just breaking that stitching free because that was out of the space. So always keep an eye out. I didn't do a good job of that should have got caught with this lining 
Okay, let me get this pulled down again. Again, you want to get it as taut as you can and keep it taped out of the way. I will tell you right now, this is my first time using this Joanne Pima that I posted about a while ago. It is very fraying. It is fraying a lot. So keep that in mind. Okay. Now, put it back on here. And it's going to center the frame back over there. And I apparently, oh, here's a piece. You don't need a lot of tear away just to get that started. Okay. I'm going to wait until it moves the frame over there. Um, I'm going to use white and black. Hit reserve stop. And it's going to move over there, so I'm going to wait until it does that. Okay. And you see right here. Put that, oops, sorry guys, put that stabilizer right there just to help give it something to hold on to. Sorry about that, I just gave you guys whiplash. Okay. So it starts and it goes up and it comes back. So it back stitches. Let me make sure. I didn't double check that nothing came loose down there. I didn't. Oh, shh. I knew this was wrong. Oh. You have to pull the lining up. I knew that was wrong. Read the instructions. Okay, let's start it again. Good thing I didn't get very far. Yeah, we, we'd be stitching the lining closed. Sorry about that, guys. Oh my goodness. I should redo this video, but I really don't have it in me to do another one. So, all right, we're going to have some phrase here. That's okay. We need better light. You do not want your lining down there because um, it's going to get stitched down. It's in the instructions, correct? Wow. That is really in there. Okay. Did I do a bean? I did not mean to do a bean on that step. That's tight. Okay, so pull your lining up out of the way. The exterior, or the second part of the lining, however you want to look at it. My son's in heaven. He's been getting to be on the screens all day. But I really want to get this one done because I have three more bags to finish. And then I'm taking a little digitizing hiatus. Spring is, break is here and I need to spend time with my son and get the house clean and the yard. Ah, who am I kidding? Got to hire somebody to clean the yard. All right. Tape that back down again. I knew this was wrong. So what we would have done is we would have just sewn all this closed. And we don't want that. We need to open. I'm going to make sure this tape is down here, though. Wow, this stuff is fraying so badly. I don't know if I could recommend that. Do you not know if I could recommend it? And your, your lining is going to get caught a little bit when you do this t stitch because it's in the wrong direction but it doesn't really affect the interior of the bag okay keep that out of the way okay make sure that's folded down again put that tear away in there
Okay, we're almost there. One more step after this. Oh, this is come loose. Darn it. Okay, I think it's gonna be okay. I should have retied it in that after I fixed it. But I think it's gonna be okay. All right. Now, last step. It says there's two more steps, but there's not. Take any extra tape and pins away. I have a massive amount of tape here. Okay, turn this around to the back. Tear away this, tear away. Use the scrap. And I have a lot of thread there, that's fine. I'm not worrying about it. Okay, now pull this down as tautly as you can. And it's gonna look like you're pulling off the hoop. That's okay. This is the part. That, I knew that didn't make sense why I used that tear away on that last step. This is the part where you need the tear away. Again, follow the instructions. I'm trying not to um, look down too often and take my attention away from the recording. And that's why I mucked up, okay. But it's in the instructions properly. Okay, now, where's that tear away at? Put a piece of tear away in here. As you can see, this is where you can see the needle plate and you don't wanna be able to do that. It won't get, it'll get caught onto something. Pull this out of the way. Okay, and your last step. And again, you wanna match the fabric, thread to the fabric, because if it pulls a little bit, it'll show the threads. And I had to hit reserve step because there's actually one more stop, but again, that's to skip to prevent it from going back to the frame, to the middle. How long have we been recording now? Oh, low power mode. Um, an hour and 33 minutes. There's probably opportunity to edit this, but I'm sorry. You guys got to listen to me. You can fast forward to the parts that you don't understand. If that makes it better. Yay! We're done! Now let's see if Kimberly did it right. Okay, now we can remove this from the frame. I use the word frame and hoop interchangeably because um, in the multi-frame world, they're actually called, or the multi-needle world, they're called frames. So I get used to saying that. Um, but everywhere else they're called hoops. So you'll see that in my instructions. I try to be consistent, but I mess up a lot of times. Okay, move the extra tape off of here. Most of it's going to get cut off, but and this actually is going to work out well that I use black because oh, and see, I didn't center this very well and it it's very close over here the lining. So make sure you center it on there correctly. It's actually just been praying on here so much. It's like lost a half or a eighth of an inch. So I would say if you're going to use that material for your lining to go ahead and um, cut it with pinking shears or pinking blade. It's really disappointing that it's shred that much. Okay, I'm just tearing away all this. You don't need to see me on camera doing that. Tear, tear, tear. And I'm going to trim it all the way around to about a quarter of an inch. I'm not really comfortable going too, too deep. You can go maybe an eighth of an inch. 
Wow, that really frayed a lot. Ooh, yikes. Okay, I want to highlight this part for you first. So we want to go ahead and leave a notch um, on either side here. And it just makes it easier when you um, go to tuck the edges in. Oh, here comes the sun. Hello, sun. Mommy's almost done. Did you come up here to get water because you couldn't get your own water? My water's over here. Oh, no. Uh-oh, dog. Your dog out of here. Oh, no. He's got to take care of his canine. It's not a canine. Oh, you did, a dog has caught a canine. Okay, but I need the bigger scissors. The no, I'm not showing him the dog. Please. I'm almost done. It's already been an hour and 33 minutes. They don't want the dog. Okay, so then go ahead and well, I mean, cut everything else around. And this um, is really thick. Okay, and then one thing to note, let me cut this out of the way over here and then I'll show you. We don't need the wedge, the notch for the backing fabric. <coughs> Sorry. Just the lining. So pull the lining loose and then you can trim this to your quarter inch in, um, seam allowance. If you're bold, use your seam ripper. I mean, your seam ripper. Your rotary cutter. <clears throat> there we go. And that's actually probably a little bit big of a notch, but. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. It's too much. Oh, and this glitz fabric in here is actually making it really hard to cut. So just take your time, angle up to that notch. And same thing over here. And you can actually turn it over if it's easier for you on this side. So you see where the notch is. Angle up to the notch. All right. And then just go around and cut a quarter inch. I'm actually going to go ahead and, um, because that right there got so tight I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and um, put some reinforcement stitches there I would do a zigzag if I could get to my regular sewing machine but I'm afraid that lining might come undone so not giving high praises for this fabric so again if you try to use it if you choose to use it um, use a pinking shears and trim it even trim the edges Wow, look how much it's frayed. See, at this point, you could go ahead and use your rotary cutter. It would be easy. I think I need to get these scissors sharpened. I only have a thousand pairs of scissors, and I always go to these ones because they have that spring action, and I really like them. So I'm getting to the thick part where the pocket was. So that's why it's a little bit harder to cut. If you have hand issues, um, arthritis or whatever, then choose not to use that pocket because you've got all these layers in here. All right. Um, before I turn this, I'm going to go to my machine over here. Hope I don't blow the circuit and just put some additional stitching there where it got really thin. I don't have confidence. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> now you also want to cut off these corners. Are we still recording? Yes. These corners right here. Just set a diagonal and do not cut into the stitch. Do that for each one. And this one I'm not going to do too much because that's the one that I was fraying. I don't want to. And I'm not going to do it up here. You can do a little bit actually. Just a tiny bit. To help trim out some of that. Zipper tape. Just kind of angle it. 
It'll help make your zipper come out a little bit better. But not too much because you don't want to, after all this trouble, you don't want that to come through. Okay, now everything's trimmed. I can actually trim this tab a little bit more. See, it's a little too much. Let me trim that a little bit more. Sorry about that. My son must not have closed the door. We're almost done. Okay. So now we reach inside, and if you've been practicing with these hemostats, did I zoom out and not zoom back in at some point? No. Sorry about that. You just saw my hand. Reach in between the lining. There's actually, oh, that's why I missed a couple pieces of lining. You don't need this piece. This is the inside pocket. I missed it because I used the same one the last time. Last sample, I used two different fabrics for those pockets. And you can do that too. It's a perfect scrap buster. Okay. So reach in between this hole and go all the way inside with the hemostats and grab the corner over here of the zipper as far as you can get and it just helps pull it through and what you do is you grab in here and then you close it close them down pinch the fabric close it down and then pull and it helps pull it through so you don't have to open your whole hand in there and once you can get it over here you can grab a hold of it with your hand and then turn so I'm not gonna turn this whole thing you guys know how to turn bags but what I want to highlight to you is that you're gonna turn it inside out to the zipper to the exterior lining first the large bag and then you're gonna undo the zipper the top zipper and you're gonna turn it right side out again so really we're turning it inside out we're turning to the inside of the bag right now and I should be being a little bit more gingerly knowing that fabric frays so much. I do have some back stitches in there, but man, this might be a hard one to close because that fabric frays so badly. Okay, it feels so good though. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. Okay, then reach in with your fingers or whatever other device you're using and push out the corners. I find if you take the time to do it now, it makes it even easier when you go to do the final push out. And oh my gosh, I have loose fraying threads, threads all over in here. And because I um, bumped this lining out just a tinge to prevent thread buildup, you won't, you might see the thread from the first stitch in there. It's fine. Match the lining if you want then. But I'm not worried about that because I don't think anybody's going to be looking in there. Okay, and again, if you can get this pushed out more. Now, if you can grab a hold of this middle thread, why I use a different color for this statement, and pull on it, it'll pull all the way across that zipper. It makes it so much easier to open that zipper up. Tear away all this stabilizer, and this usually tears away pretty easily. I'm gonna finish it up later. Reach inside. All right, and it needs to be torn away more, but I'm not gonna take the time to show you guys that. Now you're gonna turn it inside out again through that top zipper. And now this is when you get inside through the lining and really get those, work those corners out. Go in through the lining with your fingers or with your forceps or hemostats, whatever they're called, tweezers, whatever you got and work those corners out. And it's harder because of this pocket. So now look what's gonna happen. It's got, a t it's got, because we stitched it this way, it wants to stitch the pocket this way. But we want this pocket to be on the other side. So we're gonna flip this around like that as we work it out. We want it to be on the other side. Okay, just keep working on it until you get it as much picked out as you want. And it's so much easier to go through the lining. I'm doing the 
um, what do you want to call that? Just a, a rough turning. And then I'm going to get the tweezers and go inside the lining and push out the rest of the way. All right, well, I don't know what I'm going to make for the crossbody strap on this. Okay, so again, if you lock these together so they don't come undone, then you can get inside through the lining. You can't see because it's all I buried in here, but reach inside, find your opening, and work your device, your pokey device, up inside there and get that pushed out. I'm not going to keep doing this because you guys know how to do this to your comfort. Okay, take this tape off, and we're going to go ahead and make sure we do the same thing with this zipper. Try and get in there and pull at the edge and get that thread and pull it. I just lost it. Pull it. Sorry, I lost it, but pull it and it's going to pull all the way across and open up that zipper for you. And then pull out all that stabilizer. So I'm just going to loosely press this so you can see what the final look is. I mean with my hands. Okay, you're going to make sure everything is pressed neatly. Pocket's going to close. And you're going to fold it over so when you go to press it, line this up on both sides and that's going to help form the shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little snap right here on the bottom of this and inside here and it's going to hold it close. And that's it. Make some crossbody straps and you're all set. I hope you guys enjoy this project. Um, once I have everything sub set up, I'll put links on the bottom of the um, comments for the pattern and everything and hope you all have a good Easter. Thanks. Bye-bye